All right, I was a little bit late in getting this one out than I usually am. Uh, I had a lot of uh, things to percolate on, a lot of things to think about. Maybe I was coping a little bit. I'm going to get to that. Uh, this was an absolutely fantastic card from top to bottom. There were one or two not great ones in there, but the card was so good that they kind of blended out. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you to all the new subscribers and the old. Uh, we're creeping towards 550. And I'm absolutely buzzing about that. Uh, it still feels like yesterday when I had like nine subs and no one was watching. It was really quite sad. Uh, this card needs no intro, to be fair. Alright, I was expecting this one to be a tough scrap. It was not that. Uh, Emma's smashed. Uh, he was clearly aggressive from the offset. Uh, he eluded the few strikes that did come back to him. And little Dennis was clearly not expecting that kind of forward pressure. Uh, the way Emma's used his offensive variety and timing to set up that straight right that smoked his ass about 40 seconds in was as clean as it gets. Now, he did miss weight, which would normally be an asterisk, but it was by a pound, so he did clearly try to cut up until the last minute, and it really showed on the scales. He looked like an extra from The Walking Dead. Uh, he's been on the end of some really controversial losses that probably meant he was unfairly in danger of being cut, and you could see what this win meant to him as a result. Right, as soon as I saw Borjas making that silly roadman walk on the way to the octagon, I wanted to see him get piped up, and to be fair, he's probably going to be shitting blood for a week after this one. Uh, first of all, it was a great sc uh, scrap on all accounts. Uh, flyweights always bring the thunder. Now, analysts these days seem to suck off fighters that utilize leg kicks like they reinvented the wheel. Shut your face, they did not. Uh, Borjas did have his moments. He caught Van and dropped him in the first and did land another big shot in the third that wobbled him. But this fight was all about Joshua uh, Van's uh, homecoming. Uh, anyone who says that MMA fighters can't box, watch this and then suck my balls. Now, this kid put on a uh, display with the most impressive variety of strikes, especially the way he ripped to the body. Uh, it was officially counted at 53, which set a flyweight record. Now, credit to Borjas for not crumbling completely. It was a clear UD win, which I also predicted. Van is 22 years old. He's skilled everywhere, has cardio and a chin. So watch out for this kid. This was an outstanding performance. Right, on any other card this year, this could have been fight of the night. But after the standard that was set in the first two, this fight was relatively whack. Now, I assume it was Castaneda's dumpy looking ass that had this fight changed to a catchweight flight at the last minute. Don't know why Kang agreed. He could have bagged an extra 30%. He probably doesn't like money or something. Now, Castaneda won this fight. He was a little bit faster. He connected a little harder and was the cleaner of the two. He was busier and he was able to apply some of that wrestling pressure, which I did say would be the key to victory here. He also grew as the fight went on, a dominating the third by the end, which showed that his cardio was really improved. Now, should you go back and watch this fight if you tuned in late? <sighs> nah, not really. Uh, this felt like a kind of like a spa between chums, certainly for the first two rounds. Now, Castaneda won this clearly, but in the context of this card, it was pretty forgettable. Uh, another W in the bank, though. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, apparently Castaneda did have a staph infection, uh, which me meant he couldn't train, which could explain the uh, weight, weight miss. Uh, so for the dumpy comment, my bad. Yeah, Jared Gordon is fucking shit, but fortunately for him, Marco Madsen is somehow even worse. Now, I was convinced that these two men were going to bore us on the way to a decision, and I was feeling very confident about this as these two scrubs sloppily scrapped it out on the feet for 4 minutes and 30 seconds. Now, forgive me for fucking this up, but I thought the Olympic Greco-Roman wrestler would grapple a little bit and try to slow the fight down. Nope, he's a fuck nugget. After throwing some lefts and catching Gordon a few times, he clearly got confused and thought he was a striker. As it looked to be coasting to a scrappy, drawn-out fight between the two, uh, George, uh, Gordon caught him at the end of the round with an elbow and finished him on the ground. I got this pick wrong, but I really dislike Madsen. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned that, so screw it. I'm picking against Gordon next time, though, despite the win. He fucking sucks. Alright, I, I have an issue with this one. Now, it was not because I picked Borshev. All right, it might be that a little, but I thought he won this fight. Now, firstly, it was a fantastic fight. Jesus Christ. Uh, Borshev, Borshev looked magnificent for the first round and a half. He was butchering the body as I said he would. He was landing slick combinations, was battering the leg out, and making Sadikov, Sadikov do... Well, I guess it's a 12. Let's call it a 12. And he did this repeatedly. repeatedly. Now, just when it looked like uh, Borshev was cruising, Sadikov out of nowhere landed a vicious head kick which would have sent most people to hell, and then landed ground and pound elbows, elbows that split the Russian like a coconut and almost ended the fight. Now, I'm going to give credit to the ref for not stopping it because it really could have been. 
But the question was, was this round a 10-8? Now for me, because of the fact that Borshev was slapping him up for the first half of round two and clearly winning it, I would say no. Am I mad at it? Not exactly. I can see an argument for a 10-8. He was almost out of there. Now Borshev, after surviving, getting annihilated, then went to back, work, back to work in the third, piecing him up and out uh, and outlanding almost three significant strikes to one. Uh, one judge, judge gave it to Borshev, the other two gave it a draw, so it was a majority draw overall. I don't really agree that this isn't a robbery. For once, the ref and the judges didn't completely cock this one up. All right, seeing this face-off between these two look like a man tank versus a crack tweenie. Uh, Roberts did take this one on short notice, but you could have climbed into the hyperbolic time chamber for a 10-year camp, and I still would have bet the house on Rebecki. Uh, now, this one felt a little bit like deja, deja, deja vu, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Roberts was in a similar position with Jim Miller a while back when he was in the UFC and looked good reversing during a scramble only to get his arm cranked and removed from his body. Uh, yeah, so different homie, same result. Uh, I give Ro Roberts maximum credit for stepping up against this savage, but this was a dog shit bo booking. The card was stacked enough and didn't need this. Uh, they should have removed Rebecki and chucked him on a weak ass card a few weeks from now against an actual worthy opponent. What a waste of everyone's time. He should have been a million to one favorite. All right, Richie is proof that no matter how smoking hot you are, when you step into the act octagon, you lose a minimum of three twang points. All right, now to the fight. Very close scrap. Uh, honestly, I didn't know how the fuck you score this one. And apparently the judges didn't have a fucking clue either. Maybe you can help me out here. Uh, Richie dro dropped her twice. Uh, with a loop with loopy wearing more of the damage uh, loopy did seem seem to land more i guess uh, i do know one thing though and i didn't understand this but loopy was at plus 700 at the midway point of the third a uh, shout out to the retards at paddy power who i'm never going to be using again uh, someone was taking a little snort when adjusting the live odds for this one they must have been now my suspicions were confirmed by buffer's meltdown uh, trying to understand the cards at the end the decision was given to loopy by split with one 3027 card against her. Now that was a little bit iffy. The whole crowd instantly booed when they heard the result though. At least Loopy was honest enough about how close it was. I thought Richie edged it personally with the two knockdowns to one and the clear visible damage. All right, if you want to see an artist at work, uh, go back to, the, to my breakdown of this fight. Uh, in all seriousness, uh, they need to put two flyweight fights minimum on every card. Both of these were absolute bangers. Uh, this fight was way closer than I expected it to be though. Uh, Urseg did land in the first round flush and looked technically far better. Uh, Costa was swinging and missing and I thought, cool, this is a job done. Easy, nice pick. Uh, nope. Uh, Costa, to his credit, came out in the second and thought, fuck this. I'm going down in the dirt with this Donny and started swinging like a maniac. And to my surprise, the uh, helicopter mongoloid approach I shit on so much actually had some success. Excellent. Now the third Urseg went back to piecing him up and controlling him against the cage. Not the biggest fan of that, but it was very smart, I guess. It proved to be the case as he did run out the UD winner. Uh, not the best end to the fight, but it was a scrum, fun little scrap. Oh my god. Lopez might be my favorite fe uh, featherweight fighter right now. Uh, I might have to do some sacrilegious shit and get prepped to put this man on my banner. Uh, what a year he's had. Uh, he goes in on five days notice and almost destroys Evloev. I think that guy's a fraud, but anyway, I'll probably stand alone on that island. Then he goes in there and bends Gavin Tucker over and literally fucks the Lucky Charms out of him. If you're not impressed by that, he goes in there tonight and literally bonks Sabatini so hard he looked like he caused an aneurysm. Uh, it was like reality folded for a second. Now, this man is a monster. He will fuck you up on the feet. And if you uh, try to take him down, he's going to take a limb home with him. Uh, I said Brenner had the most impressive year. It might just be Lopez. I love this kid. Legit, I think he beats up to Puria. And we'll be fighting for the belt by the end of 2024. I think he's that good. Yeah, Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, this could be an expensive night for the UFC if they weren't so unfair and dishing out, dishing out bonuses. But never mind, you know how they roll. Now, this fight ended spectacularly, but I do have some thoughts. Now, to start this fight off, Benoit Saint-Denis pulled a ghillie. And I'll be honest, I was fucking furious. Uh, this isn't women's MMA. What the fuck are you doing, bro? So he's on the ground with Frivola on top, and I'm ready to type up his obituary, and he reverses the position. Okay, nice, nice, they go back to standing. Then Frivola look like he, looks like he's out muscling him there, so okay. Now he, as Frivola circles out, oh, and a way to reset, kablam! A head kick right in the temple, 
Uh, it looked filthier the more times I saw it. Highlight KO. He put Frivola on a t-shirt in a spliff. At this point, this was already the card of the year. And we've got three more fights to go. Insane. If you haven't seen it, treat yourself. Uh, he could have killed a lesser man. This was brutal. Oh dear. Mackenzie Dern. Now in the build up to this one, I said that I used to consider Mackenzie a one note, one dimensional fighter. My exact quote was, her striking is dog shit. And for someone that relies on jujitsu so much to win fights, her takedowns are terrible. Now for those that don't understand what this means, offensive wrestling and BJJ are completely different. You either need offensive wrestling to get it to a situation where you can use that BJJ, or you need to hope your opponent is dumb enough to play with you down there. She tried to stand and bang with a man. All right, Andrade is a tiny man, but she's a man nonetheless. You can't compute for that level of retardation. Andrade could not believe her luck and beat the absolute fuck out of Dern. Uh, she's just not a good MMA fighter. She tricked me with that performance against Hill. I'm never going to pick this idiot again. I would still spank to her though, so there is a silver lining. Uh, I think if any of us were told that this fight would end at around the 60 second mark in the first round, we would have all assumed that it would be the Englishman that got absolutely bonged in this one. Nuh -uh. Uh, now, it, I was really confident in picking Aspinall. I thought he'd be too fast and too well-rounded for a plodding Pavlovich, who essentially, in my mind, had a round to get him out of there. But I was even wrong about that. Uh, Pavlo uh, Pavlovich got starched in a firefight, and convincingly. Uh, if you com combine uh, Aspinall's performance with the one against Volkov, barring a freak injury, who beats this man right now? I'm saying it. On this performance, I think he beats John, John Jones. And frankly, uh, that guy is who I consider the deputy goat behind Mighty Mouse. Now, the sad thing is we're never going to see that fight. Uh, Jones is going to be gone for a year. Miocic is not going to fight him because he knows what happens. Uh, they should just cut the bullshit and upg upgrade him to the full champion. If Jones wants to be seen as the goat, he needs to take this fight. All right, now, I was, now this is where I was going to make this video last night, but I needed a little bit of coping time to get through it. Um, so I decided to sleep on it a little bit and compose my thoughts. Now, firstly, G uh, Yiri looked goofier than ever in this fight. Now, I know this was probably done deliberately to throw Alex off his game, and for parts of it, it did work, but I feel like this was an opportunity miss for him. He proved he could take Alex down and control him down there for parts, and if he had been more careful and stuck to a game plan, he could have had a lot more success in this one. Uh, it's not just who he is, though, and you don't get into a firefight with Power Tan. Now, when I first watched it, after Yuri caught the elbow and fell, uh, I thought the stoppage was way too early. However, in the post fight, Alex said he felt him go limp. And more importantly, uh, Jiri admitted that he was out. So case closed, I guess. Is Alex the most decorated combat sports uh, guy ever after this? Uh, he's two weight division glory champ and now two weight division champ in the UFC. That has never been done before. I can't explain how huge that is. Uh, he called out Izzy, which was a little bit disappointing, but I do understand it. Hill's going to be out for a while. He's older and he does want to be active. Who beats this man now? All right, weekend picks roundup. As you can see, it was another really good, really good card. I think I went nine and three. Um, a little bit disappointed by the Dern money line. I should have known better. The Gordon and Mazden one could have been on its way. And yeah, let's be fair. Pereira and Prohaska was pretty much a coin flip. So it was going to be difficult for anyone to get a flush with that on the card. All right, so the overall record goes up to 293, 129. So close to 300. Um, maintain 69%. I'm actually getting closer to 70 now. I want to thank everyone again. And to anyone who watches, if you can comment and let me know what you thought, it really, really makes a big difference. Uh, I'll be back on Tuesday to break down the next card. I've got no idea what it is. My head's kind of spinning right now. But I will be breaking that down. Have a wonderful weekend. And yeah, I'll catch you guys soon.